All right, guys, let us do our TV show. We'll be done. Okay, boy. Be done for the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should say, I get going to train. No, I'm done. After this, I'm done putting an effort in anything. No, okay. it was great. Uh, this weekend, uh, I was filming this show, and uh, the guys thought that this guy who normally comes is going to do commentary. And the guy just looked at him and said, No. <laughs> And he goes, what do you mean you're going to do a commentary? Don't you want to do commentary? He goes, no. And, all, and it struck me, as someone who's been into wrestling for like 12, 13 years, I was like, you can say that? Like, that's allowed? You can yeah. just look somebody just boldly in the face and go, no. That's exactly right. That's I what I tell them. If I don't, and I be do it in a respectful way, but if I don't want to work, who... You know what I'm saying? I just, I'll just leave. No hard feelings. No, yeah. nothing. I'll just, there's two, just say nothing. There's, there's two times where I've heard that just said in wrestling, and I, each time it just, I was taken aback. Like you could just say, "No, I'm not yeah. going to do that." <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no repercussions no, or nothing. Yeah, I mean, you just say, "No, not going to do it." I learned it from uh, Eddie Gilbert and a little bit of Brian Pilmanish. Because remember, I told you Eddie Gilbert told me, I, I, "He bet, ain't nobody burn more bridges than Eddie Gilbert." And I asked him in WCW one time when he first came down, well, how the heck can you keep just coming back? And he told me that. He said, you, you just don't like it? Quit. He said, if they think they can make money with you, they'll bring you right back. And I thought, wait a minute. I didn't know that. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm Eddie Gilbert's living on with me because I just say no. But, yeah. but anyway, here we go. A lot of stuff going on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show Dad. You don't work. You rest. Yes, you hear the claps. You know what time it is, George. How was your weekend? Well, I am so happy to be here. I'm not quite sure how many episodes we're getting. Well, I don't want to knock on wood, but we're getting close 70 to... 70-something. Uh, we're right there, yeah. Bullet, and I appreciate you for uh, putting up with me uh, all these years, okay? Uh, but what a great week I had. I am so glad to be back home, but of course, uh, all the people know that I spent all last week uh, out towards St. Louis, Kansas City area. That was the first time I have returned. It felt good to go to Kansas City one time with a little money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. First time that I was sent many years ago, I was broke. Little George was one years old, but I was going out there to go through those arches to chase my dream. And very shortly after that, I turned around and came back through the arches without a dream. You went through but, the but, gateway to the West yes. and realized uh, the West was not a place to go. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. And I got back through that gateway before the gateway closed, like the black holeish. But anyway, like, like John Candy's last movie, A Wagon's <laughs> East. That's, that's, so. that's right. So, uh, what a great, great time I had. Of course, just to go out and spend some time with uh, uh, Harley Race at his school, uh, his academy out there. And uh, even before the, tra the the students came in, I was able to just sit down with him. And, and of course, I uh, just asked him so many questions. I think he just got uh, after about the third day enough, George. Uh, he did say, kid, when did you say y'all headed back? Uh, so anyway, uh, just a great, great time uh, with him. We went to Bullet, this a very uh, underneath RO-ish uh, uh, hamburger joint, not even a sign on the wall or nothing. And uh, everybody in our new Harley, of course, and mm -hmm. just unbelievable hamburger. Uh, I didn't even, when you, you have not lived till you have uh, been sitting behind uh, in the car, eight-time NWA, uh, greatest wrestler on God's green earth, orders a hamburger. That is the most cool. You're, I don't care who you are. You're sitting there thinking, this is him. And he's ordering like no onions. On, I mean, that's the greatest thing in the world, boy. That's all I'm saying. And you ain't lived till uh, you eat a hamburger with him. I mean, it was just a moment that it, that stood out in time for me. So, uh, of course, I asked him my famous question that I've asked everybody, and I'm still an idiot when I ask it, but when Harley Race was defeated by Wildfire Tommy Rich for the NWA World Belt, the only time the folklore in wrestling was Tommy Rich didn't know about it. It was a secret. They let him surprise. They surprised him. Gave him the belt. That's what I had been told. That's what I believed. But of course, Tommy Rich shot that down when he told me, "No, stupid. I knew I was going to win it." And Harley, the one I had to go through to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Harley Race, of course, uh, wasn't that mean about it. But of course, said, "Yes, kid. Of course." Uh, Tommy Rich knew he was going to win the belt. So anyway, I kind of wish both of them would have kind of lied and kept. The well, Loch Ness Monster alive. I also heard the lore was, too, as soon as he uh, dropped the belt to Tommy, he looked right at him and said, this won't last long. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I love I, that. I, I, which I think was a cooler moment than actually Tommy not knowing. Oh, I love that. It's Harley Race as soon as it was over, like, this won't last long. Oh, like, that's oh even I more love gangster. that. Well, like, uh, and along those lines, I had even mentioned to Harley about some of the matches with him and Bob Backlund, who... Uh, uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people didn't like Bob Backlund's work, but I love Bob Backlund and Harley Race, and I had told him that, and told him that I thought, but he let, I mean, uh, Bob Backlund could work, and of course Harley looked at me, you know, a little bit of mustard coming down his face from my hamburger. He said, "Kid, 
He said, anybody in the ring with me uh, was good. He said, and I'm the one that made him good. And I said, okay, okay, I rest my case. But he did look at me, Bullet, one time, and I, oh, I love this. He said, uh, anytime anybody was in the ring with me, they didn't open their mouth. And I believe that. Uh, but just a classy uh, oh, guy. Oh, for, uh, I'm sure that if you watch him, uh, Harley Race versus Jerry Lawler, like it's almost like a little different Jerry Lawler. Like, yeah. He's wrestling because Jerry Lawler does some stuff that you know you can kind of see it's coming, kind of little like he does. I know exactly certain, what you're He does about. certain stuff, but then when he was started wrestling Harley, like, I've never seen him do this before. <laughs> One, was, but That's it just, a very good You know point. what I'm saying? Like usually, yeah. usually every time I've been in the ring with Lawler, Lawler's he's steering the ship. The match yeah. is gonna go this way. But obviously, That's when he's exactly in with Harley Race, it's going all through. I totally agree. Oh, that's so, good analysis. Uh, we, but at the same time, too, the fact that Jerry Lawler is able to do that, go out of his comfort zone, and that's go right. an hour with Harley Race, that's exactly applauds right. him for that. So. And, and leading right into this, Harley did make that mention. He said that most of his matches, and as I think back, very seldom did he go under an hour. He was talking about how he went an hour with uh, basically everybody that he went. He just it was, And I just thought that was kind of cool because he did. But just to sit in his office and see – uh, you know, he had this old 1950s Bob Hopish movie-ish Rolodex. And, I mean, a Rolodex. And, and just to, uh, to see the names and stuff, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I was trying to – he was turning it too quick because I was trying to get a few names for us, Bullet, but uh, I probably ended up getting the wrong number. But just, just a cool time for me. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable pictures of him and, like, Jackie Gleason and Bob – just a lot of celebrities, a lot of young fans wouldn't know, mm -hmm. but Harley's just unbelievable. They had one huge wall – uh, just uh, 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 dedicated to Japan, you know, Noah and all their champions, and, and just a pretty cool place uh, uh, that uh, I had went to. So anyway, of course, Harley, they were going to put us up in a nice room. Uh-uh, man, I was, in, I was in wrestling heaven, boy. I mean, they had room, shower. Uh, first time ever I was able to watch WWE Network. True story. And that's because Harley Race paid for it. So, <laughs> kind of, But I'm not going to lie to all you great fans. I did Google uh, George South right off the bat. But it's kind of cool, boy. It's kind of cool. It should. You're, I, I get screen caps all the time, and I see them all over the oh, place. Oh, boy, it's kind of cool to be the only one up at like 4 a.m. in the morning, just you and like a little kitten that just straight in, and kitten's sitting there watching the network with me. And, yes, well, nobody, I did punch in my name. That's a cool moment, to punch your name in. Uh, so, boom, I, that was a very good moment. Now, me. the question, did, did, did stuff come up? Because I punch my name in all the time on a lot of stuff, <laughs> and nothing comes up. So. Well, that famous me and Bob Holly match, uh, okay. which at the time was spot, a Sparky Plug, which he'll kill you now if you call him Sparky Plug. Uh, but that match is like, it's just, it's one of those matches that when you put your name in and you try to get you, this is just like a fill. This was even a filler match when it was a filler match, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so just a neat, neat time bullet. Got back home. Uh, just very, very excited uh, uh, to be here. Uh, one quick moment, Bullet. A lot of people think I'm making fun of this gentleman. I, I was not. I went to a show uh, Saturday. Anytime that I see individuality, people thinking on their own, I love it. True story, Bullet. There were 1,400 gimmick tables set up, like at every show. Mm -hmm. And I looked over, and this guy and his wife, which was impressive, has their gimmicks on the floor. And they're sitting on the floor. They got a little old blanket with a few cheap DVDs. So me, the kind of person that I am, I pick the table up, I go take it to him. He said, no, no, I appreciate it, but this is how I do it. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, I want that feel of like a flea market on the side of the road. So, okay. I know, I know, Bullet. Okay. So, it, that's the first time I've ever seen that. And, and I let's, call, let's, let's, let's call, uh, call it what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and what's so impressive how did the brother get his wife to go with it? I mean, to go along with it. So anyway, of course, I posted. Folks, I've never, I, I, I told him thank you for using individuality. As goofy as it was, uh, a lot of people, I was not making fun of it. I just, I told him, I said, you're the most individual guy here because we, everybody else is the, you know what I'm saying, is the same. You and your wife are the only ones sitting on the floor. So anyway, a lot of stuff going on, boy. I will shut up. Uh, of course, with you, we've got the famous uh, it's coming. I would not call this last man, last man standing because we haven't got to that point yet. But uh, the end of July, uh, bullet, mm -hmm. July uh, 24th. 24th, right here in Charlotte, uh, you versus John Schuyler. Uh, we appreciate everybody. We appreciate the match taking place in Charlotte. To where if it uh, goes the wrong way, which we don't want it to, mm -hmm. you just got a short drive down the road. Yeah. Uh, I got, I've got a short. I, I can walk with my tail tucked. Into my <laughs> a lot at stake here. Not. I know career. Uh, versus title. Uh, that, uh, versus title. And I, they, they, I have to do something that I haven't uh, been able to do in two years, which is 
uh, beat somebody via pinfall uh, or submission. Well, not so. only does your whole last two years of uh, going uh, uh, of being under, uh, going under, and 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 living that lifestyle and getting used to that comfort zone, okay, on on the line, okay, mm -hmm. it's almost a thing where if you it's danged if you do and you danged if you don't. Uh, yeah. If you win this match, it up levels you. Okay, if, uh, here, and I, perfect and I, illustration. And that's frightening. That's, if that's, you win this match, Paul Roma is elevated to the Four Horsemen. If you lose, the Four Horsemen is deep ele de elevated to Paul Roma. So, and then there's a lot of kids. Uh, I'm telling you, George. You know who's going to be disappointed more than anybody? Me, <laughs> because there goes all the flea markets, all the little bitty shows. Bullet. But anyway, so I'll shut up. Uh, anything, boy, uh, comedian this, uh, uh, that yes, comedian, comedian, uh, this Friday and Saturday at, uh, Bonkers, oh, wow. which is, uh, the Hilton at Executive Park, just, the, it's the Hilton just off 77 here in Charlotte. I'll be emceeing for Carlos Valencia, oh. uh, another a local comic is very good. I haven't seen him do an hour long set, set before. Actually, no, I take that back. I did see him do an hour long set one time and it was fantastic. Uh, so I'm very excited to be seeing him this weekend and get to see him. Uh, work and do his thing and of course I'll be doing my thing so I'm very excited about that this week. And the hosting part of it is you're doing a little bit more of that, right? Uh, it yeah, just seemed like that. Yeah, it, well I mean I just started like I've just started, it's like the next logical step for me in my career and where I'm at right now. It's, right. it's a thing, it's a step I need to be at right now. That's exactly right. Because uh, I'm just doing open mics right now, I need to get on these shows with actual like professional comedians, yeah. people that, oh, that, make that. Their, that make their living doing it and Ooh. I'm, you know, hosting, and then they can watch my set, I can watch their set, and see how they formulate an hour. Yes. Because right now I'm just seeing short sets, I'm on shows with people doing short sets, I need to be getting out and seeing people that are doing an hour, people that are I doing it that. for a living, and, and be on the, the types of shows, so I'm in the type of audience that they're in front of, so I get to start learning that, and that's that's kind of all the next step. All part of the process. Yeah, it's all part of the process, it's the next step from where I'm at and been at for the last about year and a half or so. Uh, and a cool moment for me, of course, I want to add real, real quick before we do the idiot of the week is, of course, I got to meet Ring of Honor's uh, uh, Bob Evans uh, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just an unbelievable guy. First time I'd ever met him, and uh, it was. I just, imagine you two would get along. Oh, oh we did. We, we it yeah. was just kind of neat. There's that still in this business. Everything else is dying out, but there's still this like unwritten uh, respect. If you both know that you've done it for a little bit, and uh, it's just neat. I, yeah, I told everybody, yeah, I'll mark out a minute to, uh, for him and just what he's doing and some of the, you know, the guys he's training. And uh, it just, you know, it goes without saying that, that you connect, uh, Bullet, you know. Uh, well, he gets it. He's very, like, yeah, exactly. Very, very similar to me. Like, he, you know, he's like, yeah, I probably didn't have the best attitude during this time and this time. Yeah, I probably was this way. And he really makes a change late in life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like that's, one of the, that's one of those things that, like, I read some of his Facebook posts, and he's like, you know what, I didn't always do the best thing, and I didn't always yeah. have a positive attitude, but now I'm a little bit later in life. I can't move quite the way I used to, but the thing is, though, it's the attitude and it's the work ethic, and people recognize that. That's and exactly understand right. that. So, and, and, and seriously, that uh, is kind of what I meant when I saw the, the hillbilly guy, and I know this won't even make sense, but there was a time when I would have really let that goofball have it. I mean, yeah. I, seriously, and just told him how stu the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You're sitting on a blanket with a few DVDs, uh, uh, you know, what do you think you're doing? But uh, I, I, I felt myself grow a little bit. And that was even uh, before I got to meet Bob Evans. But I just I actually was impressed that he was even thinking that that one goofy guy was thinking of a, a, a different than, than, you know what I'm saying, everybody else with our cheap pictures and, and, and you know what I'm saying, it, just, it was just different. So leaving that show, that's the only thing I remember from that from that show so anyway uh, all right well uh, bring out the idiot of the week bullet this i, I should have dedicated i know we're going to be cut off the air we're only allowed a few minutes i think well I, it's no. okay i will say this oh, i haven't been able to put the intro on this because the computer that make, creates the intro where we play journey and pictures of people yes. holding your book uh that's in the shop right now oh. they're trying to fix that right now so right and i don't want to delay putting up the show any longer so right. i'm just gonna we're just jumping right into oh, I it love this that. week we jumped into the lost, last week oh so, I love that. So oh. no, like, big intro but, or here journey. We hear it on the back half. That's we right. We hear it on the front half. Oh. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to so, have the So these are, Dad, you don't work your television, the lost tapes. Uh, they're yeah. lost. They're getting oh. out there. These are, they're, they're, they're getting out there. It's just, I'm just saying. Oh, these were so, you're trying to tell me these were in a vault somewhere and somebody stumbled across them? No, I'm saying oh. that there's no pomp and circumstance. <laughs> I'm just getting right into it. Oh, 
Uh, anyway, let me do this real, real quick. Well, you know, I, I do, believe it or not, been doing this a long time. I love everybody, really do. And you can, you can document my career from when I came out of my mama's belly that long. I have never, and I stand with this with all the pride in the world, I have never started anything. As far as rumors, I've never made fun. I mean, I, I, now I'll jump on the bandwagon once someone starts it. Oh, we'll bury somebody. Oh, I'll bury somebody in a heartbeat. You, but you, I have, you'll be one of those heels when they buried the Undertaker at Buried Alive. When he, I think when he wrestled Terry Gordy as the executioner, and they, and they started burying him, and then all the other heels came out and started yeah. burying the Undertaker too. That, that's me. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You, you become a coming yes. out and putting dirt on yes. the Undertaker. But I will always let someone throw the dirt first. But boy, I'm gonna tell you something right now. And, and, and it's funny that you we led right into this show about being able to speak your mind or whatever. But anyway. Everyone knows my history of uh, uh, going to see Journey. I took my daughter at one of the most special moments of my life. And, of course, I've had that video up of me and my daughter singing, mm -hmm. Don't Stop Believing, not to uh, uh, some little flea market band, but to Journey. One of the special moments, that's all it was. Well, this this gentleman, uh, complete idiot, not a gentleman, just a complete idiot. He will fill up this whole bag. Uh but anyway, his name, Wayne Davis, okay? And I got to get this clear, okay? Wayne Davis, you are the biggest. You're an idiot. Your family's an idiot. Your dog's an idiot. Your neighbor's dog is an idiot. Uh, and, and your aunt that you don't even know yet is an idiot. So anyway, so my video's playing. So he posts on it underneath. Okay. George is a fake, and all he cares about is money, okay? Now listen. All that may be true, okay? Well, obviously, but you, you, you had to get a ticket to Journey. That wasn't oh, free. Oh, so. <laughs> he, he don't know what he cost. Yeah. Because even my daughter, Abigail, who didn't get to go, chimed in and said, well, yeah, you're an idiot. My guy, my dad don't care about money because if he did, I could go to the concert. But anyway, yeah. Bullet, let me tell you something. Netflix. This is how stupid people are. So, I don't even know the guy. I've never met him. Mm -hmm. I have never met him in my life. What's comical about this whole thing, my son, who missed his cycle last week, okay, and has been eating dynamite, is just looking for somebody to kill. So he sees this, Wayne Davis, comment. Oh, my gosh. I care more about where is my son at at this moment. Yeah, he, than... he's got the Aldi brand oh, 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 of steroids oh, this week. Oh, he's yes. not shopping at the Whole Foods version oh, no, no, no. Of, of, of the juice. He's listen, got the Aldi brand bullet, type juice listen this week. This. And this is even after Luke Hawks, who my son loves to death, commented on how good my son looks. So now my son's just ready to go to kill somebody. So anyway, long story short, my son uh, uh, locates this Wayne Davis, who I've never met. Never met, bullet, okay? So little George lets Wayne Davis have it, okay? So guess what Mr. Uh, tough Guy, Confidence, Wayne Davis does? Wayne Davis reports my son to Facebook. You freaking sissy. I mean, really, bullet. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have a heart attack here. Wayne Davis, you are the biggest idiot that has ever been on this show. 200 episodes. You're the biggest idiot. Your wife, your mama. And, we, your, and we're at 170. There's 300 oh yeah. episodes. You're, you're still going to be you're, the biggest. You're the, you're the idiot for the next 30 shows till we <laughs> make 200. Bullet, listen, and here's what I'm going to calm down. I don't do nothing to anybody. I've never met him. You can call me all you want to after you meet me. That's yeah. that's the point of this show, Bullet. You see what I'm I saying? I mean, if I made that comment, you'd be like, well, Bullet's got a point. Oh, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> I'd actually say, I agree, Bullet, yeah, okay? okay? I agree. Uh, but, listen, I am so I get so aggravated that people just think on that stupid internet they can say something, and you're just supposed to sit back and go with it. But here's the, here's the end result of this before I, I, I throw this big piece of crap into this idiot bag is he reported my son now to Facebook, okay? And all my son done was made some uh, 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 funny comments about the guy and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, long story short, here is my point, Bullet. Uh, I can't I, get up with George Jr. on Facebook. Is that, is that the issue? <laughs> I was, was, was going to send him a message, but you're saying he's got an account oh, suspended. Oh, I can't oh, get up with well, him? Well, they, they sent him the warning gimmick, okay, and they took the down warning. his okay. post. I can and, still talk to him. And, okay. and, and, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you pour gasoline on Road Warrior Hulk, that just fuels him even more. Yeah. Okay? So now you know how your, uh, 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 your son that has uh, fought his dad all these years, very Kerry Von Erichish, when you go to jail, it's an honor. It's a bad. So no, it's just another badge of honor for little George to get kicked off Facebook. Yeah. So anyway, here's what I'm saying. Wayne Davis, 
You are a complete idiot, okay? I have never met you. I've never, I don't want to meet you. But here's my point, bullet, okay? And we'll end here as I calm down and take my Prozac. Okay. Uh, I, everybody in the world knows, my grandbabies can tell you where I'm at every week. Because yeah. they never get to see me. We broadcast it. We advertise it every week. Yeah. Uh, if Just come and see George. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, don't sit at home on mom's computer in your Star Wars pajamas and, and, and type. Uh, but anyway. So I, I, I'm at peace with myself. Uh, don't anybody ask me. Uh, one lady even said, well, you need to pray for Wayne Davis. And then I used my son's comment, uh, uh, t quote on his T-shirt. Uh, my dad will pray for you, and I'll just kick your ASS. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> he actually has a T-shirt that says Yeah, that? he got a T-shirt well, that says buy, well, I'm going to buy that. It does. I wouldn't even ask for a free, <laughs> free, free T-shirt. It, it buy does. That one. It said, uh, my dad will pray for you, and I'll just kick your ASS. So anyway. <laughs> Wayne Davis, leave me alone. Boy, I'm in my little world. Do you understand? And I let a few people come in and visit, and and and, and I love everybody. I, I would actually give you the shirt off my back and then sell you one of my wrestling school shirts and give you the shirt off of that guy's back. Uh, I, I love everybody except Wayne Davis and his whole family. So, anyway, I, I'm done. Just leave George alone. Boy, I just want to ride off into the sunset. Quit throwing rocks at me when I'm riding off into the sunset, okay? Put them right in. If you want me to disappear, just let me. What's going to make me jump off that horse and come back to Dodge is is this guy. You see what I'm saying? It's like I told Al Snow the last time I wrestled him. I said, Al Snow, I said, uh, everybody in the business is going to hate you even more now because I ain't never quitting. Because me and him had just an easy match. But anyway, so we, oh, so anyway, as I calm down, we will sell a book to anybody except. Wayne, oh, um, Wayne Davis, you ain't getting a book. I don't need your freaking money. I don't need you. I don't need, I, I, keep him away from me, okay? So, anyway, so I love everybody except him, okay? Okay. So I'm done, boy. So, I got to give a, uh, hey, hey, you went for a segue there. Oh, I know. Said, well, then well then I just hate you. Then you went through this conflict of like, oh, And I don't want no letters you. this week saying, George, you claim to be a Christian. Listen to me. This is very similar to Jesus coming in and turning the tables over. When I turn the tables over, Wayne Davis is under them. But before I turn the tables over, I will take this off of it. Which is the second greatest oh, book good. of all time, which is available at highspots.com and George's gimmick oh, table. And you don't want to know more about where George's at, gimmick table is at and where I'm at, uh, especially how comedy's going for me. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at manscoutmanny or on Instagram good at manscoutmanny. This has been another edition of Dead You Don't Work, You Wrestle. Good show, boy. Oh, my goodness. Good show. Oh boy, I need I need Byron to go to sleep. <laughs> oh boy, isn't that something that used to keep you up, George? Oh yeah, <laughs> I know it works. It works opposite with me for some reason. You've been taking it so long, it's like coffee yeah. for me. Oh boy, what in the world, man? Leave George alone. <laughs>